So, David Margolis, uh, thank you for giving us a uh, little bit of your time. It's about uh, this afternoon uh, session, uh, the Martin uh, Dane collaboratories. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the main differences between these three collaboratories? Um, well, that's um, it, it's, they're very um, there's overlapping approaches, but some differences. So I guess today's um, opening session was sort of a summary of the work of the three collaboratories over the last four and a half years. And um, the NIH is going to fund collaboratories again, but they're all being remodeled and recompeted. So the collaboratories will all be new, although perhaps they'll have some will be the same and some will be different. And very likely there'll be completely new groups that will be funded. But the first round of the collaboratories, there are really three of them, the CARE that I led, um, DARE, and DEFEAT HIV. Um, uh, the, the work of the DEFEAT HIV collaboratory was sort of summarized first. Uh, mostly um, they discussed their work on uh, genetic engineering and cellular therapy. Um, to create an HIV-resistant immune system, uh, and some work that's also been done in the primate model um, for that uh, goal. Um, studies in the primate model are probably, um, the studies that they've done, are, are uh, important um, sort of foundational work for um, any study of HIV in primates related to cure. Um, and this was actually discussed a little later in the day in the round table about animal modeling. Um, uh, then um, I spoke about the work of CARE. Uh, we've really initially started out working on the so-called kick part of the so-called kick and kill strategy, uh, which I really don't like the term, but I guess we have to use it. Um, so, what, why you don't like the term? Uh, well, I guess it's sort of a, like an easy newspaper term, and it sort of simplifies things, and it sounds scary to some people and simple to others, and I think it's neither simple nor really scary. I mean, we're developing a new kind of treatment. It has to be done in a careful, logical, rational way. Um, people on therapy now are very healthy, so it has to be very safe. And it's not going to be easy, so it shouldn't sound simple. Um, but in any case, um, so we talked. I talked about the broad work done in care to develop ways to disrupt latency, reverse latency. And then more recently, in the last couple of years, we've started to, uh, different people in the group have started to address the next step of the question, which is to clear residual vir virus once latency is disrupted. Um, after that, Steve Deeks talked about the work across DARE, which was um, really a lot, um, perhaps more um, mechanism pathogenesis based rather than strictly therapeutic development, although certainly they've done some sorts of things that were uh, similar in both latency disruption and, and some in clearance. Um, but a lot of DARE studies, I think, have been focused on where is the virus hiding, why is it hiding, and a lot of the work that Steve talked about was more about immune modulation to sort of create a remission of infection where people would control disease and be essentially elite controllers and healthy and non-infectious rather than actually the goal of eradicating all replication competent virus, which is really our goal. And I think that's a, um, a fair philosophical difference between the points. I think nobody really knows where we're going to end up. And I think we just have to sort of move forward as best we can and see where we can get. Do you think that uh, will be the last question? We are close to clinical trials combining different approaches? Oh, well, actually, yes, we are doing clinical trials now to combine approaches. Um, one was actually supposed to open in September. It's been a bit delayed and will open in probably January, February. Um, we're not the only group doing this. There are several other groups. Uh, and I'm not actually in a, uh, 
um, intimately aware of exactly where they are in the uh, in the plan, but there's a number of studies that have been funded or planned or announced that are going to try to use combination approaches to deplete persistent infection. So I think you're going to we'll see more of those things happening and we'll learn a lot. Hopefully we'll see some progress towards actually measurably depleting persistent infection, uh, but that'll be only the first step at the end of the um, symposium or the pre-symposium, Carl Diefenbach, um, you know, the director of DADES, talked about all of the next level problems, you know, residual places where virus might hide, where, you know, once we do the first thing, then we'll discover these other um, obstacles. People often mention to me this historical example of treating childhood leukemia, where initially therapy could cure the children, but they relapsed until they figured out that you needed to treat the brain to cure le leukemia as well. Uh, and maybe those sorts of things will, will be needed for HIV as well. We'll just have to see.